Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this episode of the Fred Drill. My name is Naved Anjum, and I'm joined today by a very special guest, Shweta Singh Kirti, author of this book, a recent book, which has just been published by Penguin, Pain, a Portal to Enlightenment, in which Shweta uh, processes, uh, you know, the, the pain that she uh, went through after the demise of her brother, Sushant Singh Rajput. Shweta, welcome to this episode of the Fed Drill. Thank you so much for joining us. Namaste, namaste. How about we start this discussion by uh, by a prayer? Will course, that be yeah, fine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Sure. sure. Okay. Om Masatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Kamaya Mrityorma Mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Om Lead us from unreal to real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Om Peace, peace, peace. Okay, so we can start our session now. Thank you, Shweta. Um, just uh, by way of introduction, let me just uh, briefly uh, tell our viewers what this book is all about. Uh, of course, I mean, you, you, you write that it's an attempt to uh, honor your brother's legacy and, and share the light that he brought into this world. And... Um, also, the thrust of the book, um, at least uh, in my reading, is is the fact that you know it's very important to distinguish between pain and suffering, and that is also uh, you know the bottom line of uh, the ancient Indian philosophy, philosophical tradition that we have a very rich tradition, tradition of course, and that also tells us that while pain is inevitable, uh, suffering is optional, and we choose to suffer actually, and any resistance uh, to pain actually leads to suffering um, it's important to realize that and you write that you know uh, how how basically pain can be used as one of the portals to enlightenment um, you know as as uh, as you know we can use it to be awakened in that sense and how mm -hmm. actually pain pushes us towards growth and self discovery it can it can actually be uh, a stepping stone for uh, an awakened life as you write Shetha. if you could mm -hmm. uh, in, to begin with, if you could just give us a sense of, you know, the genesis of the book, what sort of, uh, of course, the, you deal with your grief and loss in the book, but also, mm -hmm. you know, talk, you talk about your own spiritual journey in that sense. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, Naved, yes. look, in this book, the book is divided into five sections. First being the introduction. In introduction, I talk about our you know, our story, our childhood. And uh, then I talk about my breakthrough experiences, right? In childhood stories, I do uh, touch upon how our family was structured, what our uh, values were growing up, how, uh, you know, our parents embedded in us spirituality, the seed of spirituality, the seed of faith, right? We grow up in an environment like in India, right? I feel personally, I feel so blessed that I was born in India. Because in India, you know, the whole fabric, the environment is like that, that we don't have to work that hard to believe in God. We just imbibe it from our uh, environment itself. You know, we have the Saraswati Puja, Durga Puja, we celebrate God. And you know, we take it for granted that God is definitely there, right? A higher power is there overlooking us, right? Guiding us. And, uh, you know, I feel so thankful for our culture that, that those things were passed on to us effortlessly, right? So I discuss about that. And of course, there are many childhood stories that I talk about. And then, of course, I talk about my personal uh, loss, like I lost my mother when I uh, was just um, 17, right? So I talk about that. And, um, you know, and how did that make me feel? Like it was almost like removing the very foundation of my existence, losing a mother, right? At that early age, feels like that, right? And... Um, so I talk about, uh, you know, losing my mother and I even talk about losing my uh, sister, 
right? So from immediate yeah. family, I lost three people from immediate family. So I talk about that. Then I talk about my um, breakthroughs, spiritual breakthroughs. Um, and those are very prominent for me. I feel I could write this book because it, you know, my spiritual breakthroughs, my insights actually gave me the authority to be a voice for enlightenment and what exactly the spiritual enlightenment means, what it means to live an awakened life, right? So I thought that, you know, it was my responsibility to come forward and maybe guide a lot of people who were suffering because of the death of my dear brother. Sushant, right? And those people who have lost loved ones and, you know, during COVID time, so many of us uh, lost our loved ones anyway, right? So yes. I knew that this book can guide a lot of people to, to basically navigate their own grief and come to a point where they can see this grief and this whole suffering as just a lesson they could learn from, Right? To live a more awakened life. So yeah. So uh, first is introduction. And then in chapter one, I talk about the science of suffering, the science of trauma, the science of pain. You know, we go through so much of pain, you know, in our lives, right? It's just not uh, the death of loved ones, but there are so many different kinds of pains we go through. Emotional pains, mental agony, so many things. I talk, I discuss that in chapter one. And then in chapter two, I'm talking about recognizing the problem. What exactly is the problem that we, we have to suffer so much? Like Buddha said that there are two arrows that are being shot at, shot at us. Okay. The first arrow is inevitable. The first arrow of, you know, death. Like, you know, our loved ones will die. We will go through sickness. We will eventually die too, right? These things yeah. are, we will go through old age. These things are inevitable. We cannot skip them. This is what life is. And if we are telling to ourselves, no, no, I'm not going to die. Everybody else will die, but I'm not going to die. We are cheating ourselves if we are doing that, right? That's not the truth of life. The truth of life is we will go through suffering, right? We will go through these inevitable pain. Second arrow is how we are dealing with that pain. The first arrow, how we are dealing with the first arrow, right? So these pains will be thrown to, onto us. How do we deal with them? So that basically defines us. So we don't have to suffer. And how, how do we not suffer? We do not suffer by understanding, by recognizing the problem. The problem is that we identify with the body, that I am this body, you know, this, this is me, this is Shweta. I am this mind, these thought patterns in my mind. I am these thoughts, right? We, uh, you know, we identify so strongly with our storylines, you know, like, this Shweta, this person did that to me. You know, that person is really evil. And this, you know, all these are identification, deep identification. In Bhagavad Gita, it's told that we have taken several, several births, right? In each birth, we have had different sets of relationship. When we died, we had to let go of all of them, right? Anyways, right? So why are so, we so deeply attached with this identification? This is the problem. Recognizing the problem. This is what I'm talking in chapter 2. Okay. Then chapter 3 is finding the path. Right? Yeah. What is the, the path out? Yeah, the technology mm -hmm. that we have to use to figure out, to navigate this whole thing. Uh, the ident because you know we are so deeply uh, this identification is so deeply ingrained in us because we have taken so many births and we have lived like 
like an identity in all the birds. So this is deeply ingrained in us, in our subconscious too, that, you know, I am this, I'm, I'm nothing apart from this. So the third chapter is about, about navigation. Oh. What do we yeah. do to come out of it? What do we do? So we talk, so I discussed the four paths. And mm -hmm. the four paths are nothing but our four yogas. What are they? First is Raj Yoga. Second is Karma Yoga. Third is Bhakti Yoga. Fourth is Gyan Yoga. So what is Raj Yoga? What is, uh, what is meditation? If I ask you today, what is meditation? What what your answer would be? Tell me. I think looking within, trying to uh, find some answers to you know your own purpose of life, who you are, what you are, where you're headed in life, what you're doing, stuff like that. Very good. Very good. That's that's yeah. correct. That's correct. So basically, uh, Raj Yoga is when you work with your mind, right? When you sit with yourself in dhyan avastha and so you know about Patanjali Yoga Sutras, right? It's it's a very good way of introducing us to what exactly is Dhyan Yoga, right? In that we talk, uh, uh, Patanjali talks about Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayam, uh, uh, Pratyahar, Dharna, Dhyan, Samadhi. The Dhyan is the seventh stage, right? In that. Now, what do we do in Dhyan? For me, what I practice in Dhyan, I'll tell you. I practice mm -hmm. uh, this approach of Raman Maharishi. Mm -hmm. Do you know about Raman Maharishi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so is he dead? Huh? Yeah, yeah. No, I was saying uh, he, he's your guru and he, I think he's also, um, uh, you know, um, someone you've turned to at several points in your life, right? Yeah. That is Krishna. true. That is true. Ram Krishna and Raman Maharishi, both of them are my guru. And yeah. yes. So Ramana Maharishi's direct uh, path is what I like. You know, he talks about, look, what we are over here figuring out is who am I, right? What do we do for that? We try to become something in the world. We try to, you know, achieve things in the world, get things and then try to tell that, okay, I am this now. I have achieved this fame. I have achieved this money. I have achieved this power. I have, I have so much knowledge. So I am this now, right? But the truth is, none of this actually fulfills us deep inside. You know why? Because there is this sense of separation that we carry with us. Until the time there is a sense of separation that I am the Shwata and you are that Nawe. Right? There is a sense of separation, right? Till that time we won't be happy. You know, till the time we don't experience ourselves as the awareness itself we won't be happy okay so so this what we do during our meditation we focus on the sense of i am and we if i ask you right now navi do you exist what would your answer be um i think i do <laughs> you or, think uh... you, do? <laughs> you think you do or Let's you know that for sure yeah um, I know I do. I, I think yeah, that's a better right. frame answer, isn't it? Yes, yes. That is a correct answer. We always mm. know that I exist. Look, mm. we have these three states of being, right? Three states of mm. mind. One is waking state. Right now we are in waking state, right? So our body is functioning. Our mind is functioning right now. Mm. In dream state, what happens? Our body goes to rest. So we are on bed, our body is resting, our mind is still functioning. Functioning. It projects a whole world out there, right? And it becomes a part of it. And then, you know, everything that it projects is also projected by the mind itself, mm -hmm. right? So uh, our mind works during uh, REM sleep right mm -hmm. dream state then comes deep sleep state deep sleep state what happens our body is not working our mind is not working and there is complete blankness in that state also we are there you know how how do we know we are there because when we get up in the morning we say that i slept like a log right yes mm -hmm. right so we are always it's so only one thing we know for sure is that i am there 
right? I exist. Yeah. Okay. So that with that exist, I'm gonna uh, quicken it up because I I'm still answering yeah. your first question. So yes. I'm gonna try and uh, finish it fast. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. what do we do in Raj Yoga? We stay with the sense of I am itself. And what mm -hmm. happens when we do that is there is this, um, there's something from inside that comes up. It's almost like a, it's it's like a magnetic pull. And for me, it appears like a light, golden white light. And it completely sucks me inside the heart center where the sense of I is there. So this I can identify with the body mind and become external or this I can just stay as the awareness itself right and you know what happens during that time when the absorption happens the, the whole body starts to experience this extreme bliss each and every cell of your body starts to vibrate with this that light and you know it starts expanding that is the state of samadhi and that is the most beautiful state ever Everybody should experience that state. That's what we are looking for. That immense peace, ecstasy. That's what we are in reality. It's just that because we are so caught up in mind, we we suffer. If we can just tap to tap that in us, the grace in us, that's it. We are liberated at that moment. Okay, so that is Raj Yoga for you. Then what is Karma Yoga? Karma Yoga is like in Bhagavad Gita as, as it is told that we are always engaged in action, right? Mm -hmm. We are engaged in action. There are thoughts flowing in our mind. But if you see, see Navid right now even, if we see what thoughts are coming in our mind, we will see that, you know, these thoughts are not our thoughts. It has been yeah. put. It has been put. Whatever thought is, can you claim that I thought this or this thought actually came, came to you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's actually logical to say that we are not the doer. We are not even the thinker. It's coming to us. So giving it back to God, that is karma yoga. Dropping the doership is karma yoga. What is bhakti okay. yoga? Bhakti yoga is basically giving all your emotions to God. So, you know, emotions as in like, like, you know, we have these patterns in us from our ancestry to, you know, unconscious patterns in us, right? So these are emotions. When we pray to God, when we love God, when we cry for God, all these emotions, it's like catharsis for these emotions. They come out and we feel purified. We feel light. That is bhakti yoga right and we leave everything and we just love god so we drop all other desires and the only desire we have is to be one with god that's bhakti yoga what is gyan yoga okay so now uh, okay let me first explain gyan yoga and i'll tell what it is purifying what levels it's purifying so yeah. what is gyan yoga gyan yoga is vivek when you are applying your yeah. intellect intellect vivek is what vivek is vivich Okay, so what are we different discerning? We are discerning, we are discerning the permanent from the impermanent. And what is that one thing that has been constant in us? If I ask you right now, Naved, what is that one thing that has been constant with us throughout our life? Tell me one thing. Pain, sorrow. Have you never been happy? joyful yeah i mean yes so if you um, if you you know count both uh, aspects of the spectrum then perhaps joy and sorrow i think both are inevitable parts of life if one can say that that is true that is true one thing that has always been constant in your life is you yourself the one who is experiencing the pain and the pleasure yeah. You. The being of, you know, yeah. yeah, the beingness itself, the awareness itself. Now we have to understand who we are in reality. Not the body, mind, the identification, the identity, but the awareness but, itself, pure awareness, right? Mm -hmm. So right. 
that deciphering, when you decipher that you are this awareness and not this body, mind and this mm -hmm. identification, mm -hmm. this identity, you let go of this. Vairagya, let go of the impermanent, impermanent and stay with the permanent. Right? Yeah. That is Gyan Yoga. That is Gyan Yoga. So you mm -hmm. navigate this whole thing by practicing these four yogas. Okay? Yeah. And this, this is the third chapter. Then the fourth chapter is once you basically have practiced all of this and you have had breakthroughs, you, have, you are enlightened now. How do you become a sthit pragya? How do you become stabilized in that wisdom? Like every moment you should know that you are one with everyone. Right. Naved and Shweta are not different as awareness. You know, how do you continue with that mindset? That is the, that is the, which chapter? That's the third chapter. Okay, after introduction, that's introduction, chapter. first chapter, second, third chapter. And the fourth chapter is about what is the result of that? How will you live then when you know that, you know, the pain, the grief of Naved is my pain and my grief. The joy of Naved is my joy, right? Somebody who's yeah. achieving something in life is not different from me. That's also me. That's me, the awareness, right? Th these are the names and forms in the awareness appearing. So imagine the kind of mindset that person will have. How much love, unconditional love that person will feel for others. Mm -hmm. That is the result. That That's what is the pure land where, you know, we have mm -hmm. to go. All of us together have to go there. Right. So, yeah. That's wonderfully encapsulated, uh, Shweta. You have given us a sense of what the book is all about. Even though uh, by reading the book, you do get a sense of uh, how uh, rich your own spiritual journey has been. And I wanted to ask you a question about, you know, how, you, of course, you set yourself on the path, on this spiritual path, much before your loss. That is, um, long before um, Sushant was gone and you lost your mother. And I think that was also a trigger. Uh, if you could give us, uh, you, you know, talk about a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, how from studying fashion to, uh, and you write, I think, how you sort of uh, found the fashion world very hollow in that sense. And, uh, yes. and yes. that sort of, you know, you, you give that all up. And after your marriage, once you shifted to the US, uh, this, that was also a point when you um, started looking for, you know, these uh, spiritual ways to sort of cope. As, as a as a coping mechanism but also as a as a as a tool to self uh, for for self discovery that's true that's true Navi. so uh, um you know i can remember so as much as i can remember when i go to uh, back in my memory mm -hmm. you know i have always been like this you know i was weird to start with i would always think about you know, that I was one with God, you know, in some sense. And then God separated me from him and sent me here. So I had this strong sense of pang of pain with me all along. Even as a child, I always felt that pain of separation from God. So, you know, and this is uh, strangely one of the uh, requirement uh, of like of even pursuing a spiritual path if you know about um uh, it's called as sadhan chatushte sampan you have to be a sadhan chatushte sampan to even start with uh, you know learning about vedanta and stabilizing in the truth so what are uh, what are the four uh, qual qualification that you need to have the first is vivek you know, having, so Vivek is very important. Vivek is like, you know, the intellect that is fine enough to understand this subtle principle of awareness. Because if you tell it to everyone, not everyone will understand it. And even if they understand, they won't be interested in it somehow, right? Mm -hmm. You should have Vivek to understand it. Vairagya towards the, uh, you know, impermanent and deep affection, deep love, deep craving towards the permanent. And then you should have uh, Shama Dama Adi Shat Sampatti. 
So uh, these are uh, certain qualifications, like uh, certain uh, ingredients that you need to have in your habits, right? And then comes humukshvata. It's like deep, a uh, deep craving for enlightenment, deep craving for self-realization. I had it from very early on. You know, I have cried for God much more than anything else in my life. And I remember as a fourth grader also uh, writing in my diary that I am an Atma. I have to be one with Paramatma and self-realization is my only goal in this life. Mm. So that and, you know, somehow I feel it's not only this. Uh, at, uh, this person that was thinking because you know environment also matters right mom dad mama used to listen to pravachan all the time she embedded mm -hmm. in us uh, you know uh, bhakti uh, mm -hmm. faith in god so all that was given passed on to us through our family through our generation through our culture so yeah so that was always there and yeah. uh, and uh, awesome. Navet like as you told uh, that I was in fashion and uh, mm. I was even offered uh, you know uh, what is it called uh, cereals right Indian Indian cereals and all that but somehow TV TV, ha, TV, TV CDs and stuff so I, right. I didn't go for, for them you know from inside somehow I didn't feel that inclined towards it some like you know, I always knew I have to go inside because my calling for God was stronger than anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. after and somehow I found people in uh, fashion or, you know, in this world a little, a little shallow uh, because. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was my alarm. So yes. uh, it, my alarm was telling me to go uh, and do yoga nidra now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I found them a little shallow in a way. Like uh, they were, uh, they were not. They would lie. They would say things about you. Like they'll be very good to you in front, like this, but they'll mm -hmm. backbite, and you'll be like. You know, for me, it was very, like, I'm very direct, you know. I, It's difficult for me to understand uh, that kind of behavior. So, yeah. Yes. So, I found uh, that this field wasn't for me. I, I was very, maybe, simple for this field. I was not made for this field. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, also, Shweta, I think, because, uh, you know, in, in I, we 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 have spoken about you know the first chapter in which you write little uh, more personal accounts of your you know growing up years in Patna in the eighties and nineties, and uh, of course you also write about Sushant, your mother and all. I was I was just curious to know uh, what kind of relationship did you, you you of course write about all this, but just for our viewers the kind of relationship I mean his loss you know greatly affected a lot of us, including his fans uh, across the country uh, a lot. Uh, you know, a couple of, I think, three or four people actually, uh, you know, took their own lives also. In, so they were so grief stricken in that sense. So if you could talk about the relationship that you shared and he was your Pitya brother. And for my viewers, uh, it's a colloquial term in Hindi, which is uh, which is used to mean that, you know, he just came after you. That is, you know, yes. you, yeah. you know. So uh, if you could talk about the kind of relationship you had um, with him and how he was, how it was like growing up uh, with Sushant. Yes. So I, like we were always together. Now mm -hmm. imagine, you know, if like two people, they are not separate at all. So they are doing everything together. So we would eat together. We would play together. We would study together. We would sleep together. We were always always together right mm -hmm. and he was just like we were one year apart right so yeah. uh, so like everybody will also think they took us like one identity they'll call us also like together Gudia Gulshan, Ajo Khana Khane you know like that <laughs> so, so we were you know like aise. Or hum log ek dam ek jaise bhi the. we were just like very mm -hmm. uh, like protected because yeah. we uh, 
हम लोग के बहुत ऊपर दीदी थे राइट there were yeah. so many siblings before us right so we were very protected so any time any guest will come we won't have to go and talk to them so we were like sheltered in a way right yeah. so uh, and y- you could call us very naive we don't know we didn't know how to deal with the world outside we were in our own cocoon because we were so protected right yeah and uh, and you could see that in bhai's um, eyes also in his smile he was very pure very innocent and then he was he was he went into an industry which which was very different from what he was like originally to start with right mm. so uh, you know yes yeah, so anyway coming back to our relationship we were very very close very close mm-hmm. you know we uh, so close that we, like we i, I say i'm shweta right we mm-hmm. will consider ourselves as one identity like that beautifully said yeah yeah, yeah. if you could talk about um, you know the role of gurus i think you were uh, early on you were introduced to the teachings of uh, uh, the sage called ramana maharishi and uh, of course later on you went on to find many more gurus if you could talk about that how does that help in giving you a sense of direction and and purpose that where you headed on your spiritual journey and that kind of shape so yeah yeah navid i cannot even start to explain how important it is how very important it is you know early on i remember i would cry for god you know and this you know it's almost like wrenching of heart the pain i would feel was like you know somebody is like holding my heart and turning it like that you know twisting it so much pain will be there that why did you separate me from you god you know what did i do wrong that you separated me from you that kind of pain hmm. right so Uh, and you know every time even as a child whenever i'll see any temple any masjid any church i would pray god please be with me be one with me always be with me i'll just pray this right and understand then when i got to know about this teaching that the yeah. awareness that i am is god so i have never been separated from god and if i love god enough is just that i have to drop this identity and this identification with the mind each and every thought that comes to my mind i have to let go of it i am complete myself i'm whole myself right imagine how i would feel right i'll tell you about one of my breakthrough experiences where you know i went uh, to no this is not my breakthrough experience but this is a very very prominent experience in my life where i was still a child uh, and i had given this entrance examination of nift okay and you write about in the book ha mm-hmm. i write uh, write this about in the yeah. book yeah, and please, please. i yeah so i had uh, gotten selected in the written right and they called me for situational test and interview to kolkata Mm. Mm-hmm. and uh, you know what hap- happened was like my sister's wedding was also being planned during that time my second sister ruby this so uh, a lot of things were going on there was nobody to take me to kolkata we were in patna right mm-hmm. so uh, somehow god planned it for me very beautifully i started crying and i was you know i was like god you know i like i got into nift in a way like you know i uh, crossed this written examination and nobody is there to take me to the interview he was like don't worry i'll i'll plan everything you don't have to worry and miraculously everything was so beautifully planned and when i went there i i didn't know about this temple chunubaya just took me to that temple uh, dakshineshwar and you mm-hmm. know as soon as i went there navid i cannot tell you the time i touched the building the wall tears mm-hmm. started to flow out and being a teenager i was so embarrassed about this that why am i crying there are so many people here they are seeing me crying i should not be crying and i couldn't mm-hmm. stop it it just kept coming out and you know the whole uh, 
you know there was this line that that you have to stand in then you do the darshan of ma so whole uh, line i was like crying you know full time mm -hmm. and then i went when i went in front of ma okay mm -hmm. so there was this priest they, they had something uh, like in their hand and they did this and you are supposed to leave uh, from the other side you are not supposed to stand there but as soon as he put uh, that thing on my head i just i just kind of collapsed there on my knees and i just started crying profusely that god why did you separate me from you i'm not gonna leave this place till the time you answer me why did you separate me from you and i should be asking that please god uh, get me into nif time you know all those things that didn't cross my mind at all the only thing that was coming in my mind was this and then there was this lady that came from so i didn't see her directly from the corner of my eyes i saw that there was this lady that was coming towards me from the side everybody was leaving so it was impossible for somebody to come this side because it's it was so crowded so oh. she was wearing white clothes with white hair and then she kept her hand on my uh, head like this as if she was about to fall or something and as mm. soon as she kept her hand here this beautiful uh, feeling sensation rose in my whole body and my heart that was like you know paining and hurting so much it just had this calmness dawn upon it and then mm. you know i rose there and i was like almost like i got the answer you know that god is there with me and then i started leaving the place i was very thin then i almost got like there was i almost died there <laughs> because you know i got completely smushed Mm. and i was like okay god i'm there in your uh, temple if even i die right now i don't you know i won't regret it's your temple right i'll die where you are so he somebody held my hand and pulled me out you know mm. and the time i came out i saw chunubia standing there so i thought maybe he pulled me out i was like chunubia aapne pull kiya kya mujhe to bolte nahi main to yahan pe itne der se wait kar raha tha tum kahan thi so mm. i don't know who pulled me out of that but what mm. i mean to say is god is there you know mm. and if you believe in him he does respond he does respond right and yeah. this experience actually did that for me i know for certain that you know he's listening to us he's there and he'll respond to every prayer that we do right also shita i think uh, you know this this uh, presence of the divine that that you write about and uh, then we move on to uh, you know this how this how this uh, spiritual journey also makes you um, uh, as you said a little bit more aware about uh, your existence uh, on that level and also to rise above the mundane concerns of the life around you and to see the bigger picture in that sense to transcend um, you know these uh, you know realities the everyday realities of your life and to and to see to to become you know in that sense bigger and be selfless and uh, you know and and think about the larger good and stuff like that i was just curious to know how has that sort of changed your life ever since you have uh, undertaken this journey and how does that reflect in your everyday life and how does an a common man can achieve that uh, through spirituality through through uh, you know all these forms of uh, you know uh, enlightenment that you have written about in the book yes so navid you know uh, earlier when i was living until the time i had not achieved all these breakthroughs i didn't have this knowledge you know i i used to almost feel like i was in trance somebody was holding my hand and making me move and go through life there was nothing in my control and i was just pushed by life you know mm. but when i got this knowledge you know it gave so much meaning so much purpose it actually made me feel that why this life at all you know why do we take this life it 
it brought that much meaning to uh, life itself, right? It infused it with wisdom. It infused it with, uh, with meaning, with purpose. And, uh, and okay, so imagine, um, imagine you're very thirsty, right? You're mm. very thirsty and uh, you finally get to drink water how would it make you feel how the, how quenching would feel like right mm -hmm. it felt like that mm -hmm. deep 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 inner quenching and you know this thirst has not been of just this life this thirst has been of many 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 lives right mm -hmm. coming to that point where you realize that you know it is not in looking outside externally uh you know seeking something outside uh, from outside world fame money power knowledge it's not in seeking all that that you really truly feel fulfilled it's actually when you go inside and you uh, find the source field the source itself that you come come uh, you know to that sense of extreme fulfillment extreme deep satisfaction that you have been looking for imagine how it would feel mm -hmm. that's how it felt that's how it felt and you know the the purpose of writing this book has been this that i want everyone to experience this everyone to come to this point where they they feel the same sense of fulfillment the same sense of bliss and ecstasy that is there that is there our right it is our right it is god has given us this why are we not why are we not tapping into it that's that's the reason why i wrote this book yeah. thank you one last question shweta and uh, and then we wind up this interview um uh, you know the, uh, i would take you back uh, to those days and uh, in hindsight if you look back uh, all this, uh, you know, this uh, media kind of, uh, you know, circus around that was really sad and tragic also. But uh, if you think back at those days, uh, of course, now you have found peace and come to terms with the loss. But uh, what do you make of those days when, uh, you know, there are several things that were happening. People were, you know, uh, in, in that political backdrop also, the Bihar assembly elections were happening and, you know, uh, and you know some some people used his death also, also as a campaign uh, issue and then he was termed as a son of bihar who fell victim to the big bad world of bollywood then there were some people who said that you know there was um, you know he was a victim of nepotism and that he was not getting offers all those as a, just as an aside if you could give us a sense of you know your own reflections on 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 those times and days and how you have come you know away from that and sort of come to terms with uh, his loss yeah so and, now let me tell you let me tell yeah. you first of all we actually don't know what happened and i swear yeah. that on god i seriously still till date i don't know what happened i cannot yeah. say it is suicide or it's a murder i don't know you know when it was told to me you know the very first question i asked i know randi was not in situation to answer that but yeah. you know i asked this question that uh, the how come there was no stool there? Like if somebody has to really commit a suicide, imagine if I have to, you know, do something like this. I need a stool to first tie something on top of the fan and then, you know, put it around and then kick the stool to hang. There was no stool. Logically, it's like, what? Do you get that, Navi? So I asked this question to Ruby D, to Randi. I asked them. That was there a stool? They don't know. So this was first logical fallacy. What I felt like, okay, this doesn't, you know, like. And then there were so many people who kept coming out and telling the one, so many people telling so many stories. You know, it how it felt, Navi, that somebody has put a spear in my heart. And now with every story, it's like twisting and turning, twisting and turning. And that open wound is not healing. It's not closing. 
though i have so much of wisdom so much of sp spiritual insight i had to really work hard to put them into practice otherwise i wouldn't have survived myself you know because it's your genes like you know it's your genetic pool you have lost it feels like it comes to your own survival you know yeah do you get Especially that it feels that. like you, yeah it feels like you have lost yourself it feels like it comes to your survival basically right so uh, very very difficult the whole process was so very difficult navi if not for um, uh, this spiritual practice and with uh, yeah you know if not for this spiritual wisdom mm -hmm. we we as a family wouldn't have survived all of us are spiritual all of us we are little different in how we deal with the world but all of us are spiritual Well, papa on that went note, through, hmm. papa went through heart surgery right yes. he had a bypass yeah. surgery didi went hmm. through uh, like you know she had to get stent put in so her arteries were blocked so after after this you know broken heart syndrome we say yeah my family yeah. members went through that I had to go for four months of solitary retreat where I I was just completely deeply focused on my practice, where I was mm. completely cut off from the world, where I could just focus and practice meditation. So mm. imagine it needs so much of work. It's not easy, and imagine we have not still found closure. That's yeah. It's yeah. almost like God is testing us. How much faith do you have? Let me test. perhaps there is never going to be a closure and those of us who have lost loved ones we know that there is easy to it's easy to talk about closure but uh, but in reality it remains very very elusive so i do hope shweta that you some way somewhere you know you are able to i mean of course you have come to terms with it but then um, that's a loss that's uh, that's remain that's going to be always there you feel that vacuum you feel the absence of a of someone as close to uh, you as as your younger brother and immediate younger brother so um But thank you so I much mean, I, would, I, would, i would like to just say one more thing you know let's Absolutely. close it on a very positive good note like krishna Absolutely. said that you yes. know uh, death is nothing but changing of clothes you you know take off your old clothes and you take a new one so you take off the old body and bhai will come in a new body so he has not gone anywhere and i know it for certain right he will come back he will come back so i have that hope and i know it for a fact so that that keeps me going subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more news and updates